everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to knit an easy seed stitch cowl in the round. This is a simple project that you can do even if you don't have much knitting experience. We're gonna walk through every single step of the process along the way. I'm gonna show you how to cast on, meaning getting your stitches onto the needle. I'm gonna show, show you how to join so we can knit in the round. We're gonna learn the seed stitch, which is very easy, just some knit and purl stitches. And then finally, we're gonna bind off on our stitches. So this cow is a nice size. It's nice and generous and cozy. We're gonna use some super bulky yarn. And the finished cow has about a 32 inch circumference. And then it has about a 12 inch uh, tall height on that, okay? So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to get the circumference and the height that you need. Uh, we're gonna be using some circular needles here. These are US 15 10 millimeter circular needles. In case you're wondering, these are the Knit Picks interchangeable needles. They're like a really pretty swirly wood. And if you've never used interchangeable needles, you have the needle tips, and then you have this cord where you can get different lengths of it and then different size tips so that you just screw on what you need and it's very flexible and versatile. And I'll put the link down below for these in case you're interested in them, but they're, are, they're really pretty, super high quality. Um, the length of, I have here is 32 inches. So these are 32 inch circular needles. And again, the 10 millimeter US 15 size needles. Um, now, if you have a 24 inch circular needle, uh, you could use that too. That would be perfectly fine. Okay, let's talk about the yarn here. I'm gonna be using two balls of Lion Brand's Hometown Yarn. This is the Providence Pink colorway. Um, it does come in dye latch, just as a side note if you're using two balls like I am. And it's nice and super soft, so it's perfect to go around the neck and have against your neck. Each ball of this is 81 yards, five ounces, 142 grams, and 74 meters. This is machine wash and dry, just as a side note. Now I did want to point out the recommended needle size for this yarn is a nine millimeter US 13. I'm gonna go up a needle size just to give it a little bit more drape. Um, we're going up, like I said before, to the US 15 10 millimeter needle instead of the nine millimeter on that. If you need to substitute yarn though, just look for a yarn that does recommend the nine millimeter needles and is a six super bulky on the yarn weight scale. And you'll need a total of 162 yards. That's uh, two balls of this is 81 each. So you'll need a total of 162 yards for this. One more thing I forgot to mention that's super helpful is you'll need some kind of a stitch marker, just one. It doesn't need to be a removable stitch marker. When I use large needles like this, a lot of stitch markers, the opening is a little bit small. So I like to use a binder ring for mine. Um, you can use whatever you want. If you don't have a stitch marker, a little piece of scrap yarn would be just fine. Okay, so I have my needles and my yarn. We are gonna do the long tail cast on to start our project. Now, I know a lot of you may already know how to do that, so you can skip ahead if you need to, but um, for those of you who are new to knitting, I'm gonna go through it step by step. So when you do the long tail cast on, um, it's exactly what it says, you're using a long tail to get your stitches onto the needle. So you have to sort of estimate, I'm gonna do about two wingspans of yarn. And what I mean by wingspan is just, I'm gonna stretch it out from hand to hand all the way across with my arms outstretched. I'm gonna do that one time, and I'm gonna do that two times, and then that should give me plenty of yarn to cast on, okay? So what I'm gonna do is wrap the yarn around my fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind that loop, reach in with one of my needles, bring up a loop, and tighten. This actually counts as our first stitch. So to do the long tail cast on, if you're not familiar, what I like to do is let the yarn sort of hang down, the yarn going out away from me is connected to my yarn ball. This is called the working yarn. This is the yarn that will feed in the entire project. And then the yarn pointing towards me is this long tail that we created, okay? So then what you need to do is take your other hand, your uh, index finger and your thumb, and come in through the bottom here, 
and then I like to kind of clamp it with my pinky. And then we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna do the first couple of stitches nice and slow. We're gonna come up under the thumb, go around and through that index finger loop and then bring it through the thumb loop and see how there's a, a stitch now on your needle. Then just gently tighten it onto the needle. Not too tight because you need to be able to knit back into these stitches in a minute. Slide it back if you need to. Now remember, index finger and thumb, clamp it down with your pinky, open it up. It should make like a diamond shape. Come up under the thumb, go around the index finger and through the thumb loop, three stitches, and gently tighten. Go around the thumb loop, go around the index finger loop, come back through the thumb loop, and tighten. There is a poem about casting on like this, like go through the fence or something. If you know that, please leave it in the comments below. I couldn't remember it when I was um, planning this project. All right, let's do this again. Up under the thumb, around the finger, through the thumb loop, tighten. Around, around, through, and tighten. Around, around, through, and tighten. Around, around, through, around, around, through, okay? So we have a couple stitches on here. We're gonna do a total of 58 stitches to cast on. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast on the rest of my stitches and then we'll rejoin for row, or round one rather. 55, 56, 57, and 58, okay? So here's all of our stitches and I'm just gonna sort of spread them around our circular needles like this, okay? Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we need to, right now we have a U-shape project. We need to make it a circle so we can create our tube. So what we need to do is we're going to place our stitch marker right onto the needle before we begin. And then we're going to join with our first stitch that we're gonna do. But we wanna take a little peek at our project and just make sure that um, our project isn't um, twisted, okay? You don't want it to be twisted. If you want that tube shape and not a Mobius, a Mobius is like a twist in your work, um, you'll want to make sure everything's straight, okay? So our first stitch that we're going to do is a purl. Because we're doing a siege stitch, we're going to be purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. The next round we're going to do knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, okay? So for the purl stitch, we have to have our yarn going down like this, okay? So we want to make sure all of our stitches as we go around, see this little like rope sort of? We want to make sure that's all facing inward, okay? So we now have our, our project is all untwisty and we have our first stitch that we're going to work. You can kind of slide them up a little bit if you want to. We've placed our marker. We're not going to worry about this tail. We're just going to kind of scoot him out of the way. All right, so to make a purl stitch, if you're not familiar, and we can slide our work up a little bit, what we're gonna do is we placed our marker. We're gonna go in to the stitch, the first stitch here from the front, okay? So go in from the front. It might be a little tight that first go, but it'll kind of settle down and loosen up a little bit. Now we have our stitch marker here. There's a lot going on right here in this little area, but it'll everything will kind of settle down and relax. Okay, then what we're gonna do is, actually I wanna get my yarn ball out of the way here, is go, we inserted our needle, we're gonna go around that top needle, and then we're gonna take our needle from front, go around to the back, catching that loop there, and push it off, okay? You might wanna double check, make sure nothing's twisted when you make that first stitch. It's much easier to undo a first stitch than it is 30 stitches, okay? Now, like I said, we're doing seed stitch. So the next stitch we wanna do, let me just zoom in a little bit, is a knit stitch. So we need to take our yarn and take it around the back of this needle this time, okay? So what we wanna do now is knit a stitch. So go in with your right needle, but this time we're gonna come up under our needle and we're gonna go around that bottom needle with our yarn and we're gonna bring the needle from back to front and notice I'm catching that loop as I come around and push it off the edge, okay? We've now done a knit and a purl stitch. We're gonna do a bunch more together. All right, 
bring your needle back around to the front because we're doing a purl stitch. And we're gonna take our needle and go across the top there, wrap the yarn around that top needle, bring the needle from the front to the back, make sure you're catching that loop on your way back there, and push it off. Take your yarn, go around the back with your yarn first, and then we're gonna knit a stitch. So come up under, around, bring it from back to front, catching that loop, and push it off, okay? Now, until your project kind of relaxes a little bit and you get a little bit of uh, height on this, uh, you might get a little, experience a little bit of tightness, but that's okay, that's normal. On well, that first round can be a little bit um, tight. Okay, we just knit a stitch. Now we're gonna bring our yarn back to the front. And we're gonna take our needle across the other needle on the top, go around that top needle, take your needle from the front to the back, catching that loop and push it off. Okay, let's pick up a little bit more speed. We have a couple of nice stitches going on now. Take your yarn to the back of your work and we're gonna come up under to knit the stitch. Okay, now we're gonna bring the yarn to the front, come up over top, go around that top needle, front to back, push it off. Okay, whoops, caught a little bit of edge there. All right, slide some more stitches up if you need to do that and push some more back this way. Now, we just did a purl, so we're gonna take our yarn to the back to do a knit. Knit the next stitch, bring the yarn to the front, and purl the next stitch. Bring the yarn to the back, knit the next stitch. <laughs> bring the yarn to the front, purl the next stitch, okay? So we're just gonna do that for the entire round, doing the sequence of purl knit, purl knit, purl knit, all the way around. Okay, so we just did a knit, so now we're gonna do a purl. Okay, you need to slide things up a little bit, feel free to do that. Bring the yarn to the back, knit the next stitch. Bring the yarn to the front, purl the next stitch. Bring the yarn to the back, knit the next stitch. Bring the yarn to the front, purl the next stitch. Just like that. Okay, so we have some great stitches that we've done so far. Now I just wanted to show you, when you look at your work like this, the purl stitches are gonna have a little horizontal bar up under. So this is the loop that's looping around the needle. Right up under that, you're gonna have a little horizontal bar. That is gonna show you that that's a purl stitch. This is gonna be important in a few minutes when we start the next round. The knit stitches up under that loop that's looping around the needle is gonna be a little V. So it looks like a little tiny heart, okay? So you have a purl stitch with that little bump and you have a knit stitch with that little V, okay? I'm gonna keep going all the way around working my knits and purls, knit and purl all the way around. And then when we get done, uh, towards the end of this round, um, we're gonna rejoin and I'm gonna show you how to move on to round two. Okay, we're coming up to the end of round one. Here's our stitch marker. So we have just two stitches left. So I just knit a stitch. So I'm gonna purl the next stitch and then we're gonna knit that last stitch. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is um, start round two. So let me just get situated here. We're gonna pass our stitch marker from this needle to this needle. And then, if you may remember a few minutes ago, I said that the purl stitches have that little bar up under the loop and the knit stitches have a little V up under the loop. So we're gonna do the opposite of what we see. So the last round we did, we started the row, or the round rather, with a purl stitch. We're gonna start this round with a knit stitch. So basically, if you lose track of what you're doing, um, anytime you see a purl stitch, you knit that stitch. Anytime you see a knit stitch, you purl that stitch, and so forth for the entire project, okay? So what we're gonna do now is, again, we have a purl stitch here, so we're gonna knit. 
So we're going to keep this. We're going to keep this yarn back here, and we're going to come up under, go around, and I like to give it a little tug so you don't have a big gap there, and knit the stitch. Okay. Now bring the yarn to the front, and we're going to purl a stitch. See the little V, so we know that we need to purl. Wrap it around the needle and push it off. Bring the yarn to the back, knit the next stitch. Bring the yarn to the front and purl the next stitch. And we're just going to do this all the way around till we get to the end, okay? So as you can see, we're getting a little bit of our stitch sequence. There's not a whole lot to see yet, but you can see we have a little a series of V's and little bumps that sort of uh, zigzag, if you will, okay? So just keep doing that all the way around. Everywhere you see a knit stitch, work a purl. Everywhere you see a purl, that little bump there, work a knit stitch, okay? So I'm gonna keep going with round two, and then when we rejoin, we're gonna look at our handiwork, okay? So just keep going with your sequence, and we'll rejoin in just a moment. Okay, coming up to the end of round two, we just have two more stitches to work. We're gonna knit this last, second to last rather, and then purl the last one here, okay? So, let's look at what we've done. We have some really pretty texture happening here. Um, all of our knits and purls are making some nice little bumpy seed looking stitches here. So what you wanna do, for the rest of your project is just keep repeating rounds one and two, one and two, over and over again until your piece is as tall as you would like it to be. Now I'm going to work one ball of this and when we get to the second ball I'll show you how to uh, join the new ball onto that uh, ball as well so that um, you can continue on. If you only want to use one ball it'll be a little bit shorter but I want to make mine nice and tall and cozy as well. So just keep working rounds one and two, one and two over and over again until you've either run out of yarn or your piece is as tall as you'd like it to be and in a moment I'll show you how to join that new ball of yarn on as well. So I've been working up some rows and we have some really beautiful texture now, our, our wonderful seed stitch. And I have just a little bit of yarn left, so I'm ready to add the second ball. This is uh, what I got with one ball. And now we're ready, ready to add the second ball of yarn. So go ahead and grab your yarn. And there are lots of ways to join yarn. I like to just tie it on and keep on going. And then we'll deal with the ends later. So take your strand, your old strand, and what I do is just tie the new yarn right around the strand. So this way you can, um, see I'm mid-row, I'm not even at the beginning of a new row, so you can tie it on at any time. And then, so I tied it around that strand, and then I'm just going to push it in, drop the old strand, pick up the new strand of yarn that's connected to the yarn ball, and now I'm ready to just keep knitting. And then later, what we'll do is just um, deal with the ends, and it's now on the inside of the cowl. So just slide that right into the stitch, not too tight, don't put it so tightly up against it. Pick up your new yarn, and then we can just keep going with our pattern, okay? So we did a purl stitch, now we're gonna do a knit stitch, and so forth, okay? So keep going with that second ball of yarn until you're about out of yarn. And then what we're gonna do, you wanna save a little bit of yarn because we're gonna also be binding off um, and getting this off of our needles next. So you do wanna save a couple of yards to do your bind off. Um, save a teeny bit more than you think you might use just to give yourself a little bit of a cushion there. And then we're gonna weave in the ends and our cow will be complete. So keep going with your seed stitch uh, with your second ball of yarn and we'll rejoin in just a moment. Okay, I've just been knitting along, knitting more rounds and our seed stitch is at about 12 inches high if we hold our ruler up to it. So now I just have a little bit of yarn. I don't wanna push things too far and run out uh, mid round. So I'm gonna go ahead and bind off. I'm ready to bind off. I got a nice height and it's gonna give me some really pretty drape. 
So when we do our bind off, we're gonna do a basic bind off, but we're going to do our bind off in the seed stitch. So it sort of mimics what we've been doing all along, okay? And that's super easy. So what we're gonna do, now here is my stitch marker. I've come to the stitch marker at the end of the round and I'm ready to begin a new round. So this last round is gonna be the bind off, okay? So I can now remove the stitch marker. And what we're gonna do is keep on working our seed stitch as we bind off. So our next stitch, or the first stitch of the round rather, is in the previous round was a purl. You can see that little um, bump there, little horizontal uh, bump. So we're gonna make that a knit stitch. We're doing the opposite, keep in mind. So I'm gonna put the yarn back here, and we're going to knit the stitch. The next uh, stitch would be a purl, because the one we previously did was a knit. So you're gonna knit two stitches, and then what you're gonna do is I'm gonna put the yarn back here just to get it out of my way. The first one we did just a minute ago, we're going to take our needle, our left needle, and you know what, let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better what I'm gonna do here. We're gonna take our left needle, and we're gonna take that first one that we did, and we're gonna pick it up with our needle, lift it up, over, and off the needle, okay? So we're gonna do our next stitch. Now that was a purl, so we're gonna knit this stitch just like that, and we're gonna do the same thing. Take the left needle, lift it up, over, and off. We're gonna purl the next stitch. Get your yarn out of the way if you need to. Lift it up, over, and off. Bring our yarn forward, I'm excuse, excuse me, keep it in the back. <laughs> I moved it. We're gonna knit the next stitch. Lift it up, over, and off, just like that, okay? And you're, we're just gonna keep doing that. Now, as you can see, we have um, an edge now. It is off the needles, okay? So we're just gonna do this all the way around and it's going to bind off our work. Now if you need to slide things around, if that makes it more helpful, but you're just gonna keep doing that. So purl, and then bind those stitches off, okay? So I'm just gonna keep doing this in our seed stitch all the way around, and then we're gonna rejoin towards the end of the round, and I'm gonna show you how to get that very last stitch off the needle. You're gonna do this until you have one, just one loop sitting on your needle, okay? So continue around and we'll rejoin and completely finish it up. Okay, so here we are coming up to the end. I'm just knitting the last stitch on my left. And now we're done. We don't have any more stitches on this side, but you wanna just take that last loop, bring it up, over, and off. And now we're left with one stitch on the needle. So what I like to do, if you have, I just have a little bit of yarn, but it's a little bit too much to try to weave in. So I'm gonna cut the yarn so I just have a nice little tail. And then what you can do is sort of loosen it up and you can remove your needles and slide them out of the way. And then what we're gonna do is take that tail and you're gonna send the end through the loop. Just like that, okay? Now, seed stitch is completely reversible. It looks the same on both sides but we do need to weave our ends in. And so what we wanna do, I'm gonna grab my tapestry needle, is weave those ends in next, okay? So I am gonna turn this inside out. Even though it's reversible, I'm gonna have an inside and outside, just a personal preference. And grab one of your tails. And then what you can do is thread your tapestry needle and then take your tail and then just kind of send it in between the stitches. Like in those plies, you can go in between plies, but just go in a ways with your tail. Come back down the other side. I like to go in two directions like this. Go in one direction and then come back in the other direction because it helps to sort of lock that tail into place. And I'll kind of uh, straighten things out and make sure that um, it's nothing is buckling up and then I have a couple more tails I'm gonna weave in now. So our ends are woven in and our cowl is finished and it looks very pretty 
It has a really pretty drape and it just has a nice soft texture. If we open it up like this, you can see the, the drape is real nice too. So that is how you knit an easy seed stitch cowl in the round. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.